welcome back to my channel. So I know people have been asking about these last Juno episodes. So today I'm going to record the last ones and I do believe it's Aquarius and Pisces. So that's what we're going to do. Let's just change the um, the color. Let's change the mood. Blue. We are blue today. But yeah, I do feel that both Aquarius and Pisces are linked together with the color blue. Am I totally wrong here? So this one is going to be about Juno in Aquarius. So your soulmate is going to be very independent, quirky, might even be a little crazy, <laughs> but in a good way, in the good way. They might also be detached, detached. It might not be someone who likes to hug. They might not be someone who likes to tell you that you they love you all the time. That's, you know, Aquarius is a little bit more cold, but it doesn't mean that they are like, you know, not, you know, able to love someone, but they do have that in them. So this can be you or this is your soulmate. There is going to be a special spark about them. It's a person who's really going to understand your need for friends all kind. It's a, really someone who's going to understand whatever you want. If you're a girl having girlfriends or a girl having boyfriends, it's they're not going to question it. They're going to understand it. Also with religion, they don't really care about it. It is someone who's also going to understand that you need space, that you need to be together with your friends or be together with your family. They're not going to question, you know, what it is you want to do with your day. And like I mentioned before, this person is not going to be a fan of clinginess. They do not like that. They do not like if they can feel that you try to own them. They want to be free. There could be an age difference between you and your soulmate, or they could just be very different from you. Acceptance, respect and support is very, very important in this relationship. This is someone who does need the space. Again, this can also be you, that you need your space. But again, this can also be the person, your soulmate. And sometimes those people can actually attract people who threaten that space. And sometimes they attract those who are independent, unconventional, or slow, or hard to get close to. With this placement you might desire someone who is a humanitarian, someone who loves nature, someone who really cares for the world, for humanity, someone who has a large social circle, someone who knows a lot of different people from a lot of different countries or places. And therefore, you know, you can go with that person to interact with a lot of different People go to parties, see new places, see new countries, try new things, new experiences. You might want to have a person who is quite friendly, someone who is idealistic, someone who is innovative or progressive, you know, in the way that they do things. Either for, you know, themselves or for other people. You might really desire someone who is highly intellectual, someone who can speak, someone who is not just sitting, drink, sipping drinks and just talking about famous people. You don't want that. No. You do want to have someone who is detached emotionally when it comes to situations or people because that really allows them to see, you know, things from another perspective. They might really, 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 like I said before, highly enjoy to socialize with other people at any time and at, at any place. You know, they don't care what the time is. They do have this feeling over them like Gemini that they can wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and be like, yep, we're going to that party. <laughs> and you know, you might find yourself do all those things with them. Even if this is something that you wouldn't have done previously in other relationships. This is a person who's going to make you do this, like want to do this. There might be something eccentric or unconventional about this person. This could, you know, include this person's interests. 
This can be about likes. This can be about dislikes. This can simply also just be about, you know, an age difference, which might be seen as unusual in society. If this sign is afflicted, it might be someone who is emotionally withdrawn, someone who detach him or herself. And all three you might know that they have affection or feelings towards you. They might really have a hard time like expressing or showing that to you. And you know, it might be because of their highly intellectual nature. And if you, you know, want to talk about feelings or uh, you want them to, you know, show feelings towards you, they might really distance themselves from you. There can also be a fear of commitment here. This can be from you or this can be from your partner. People with this placement often withhold marriage. So it might be someone who is like, you know, you can be engaged to this person for years and you can ask them like, it's time to get married. And they're going to be like, well, maybe we should just wait two years. And they're just going to keep playing this game for forever. It's not uncommon with displacement to stay single for life, you know, because that you or this person decides that they want to. Because you or they might value their freedom too much or more. They sometimes need experiences above being connected in marriage or in a deep relationship, which can sometimes manifest as an open relationship. So the good traits with displacement is free loving, independent, intelligent, friendly, easygoing. The bad traits with displacement is unfaithfulness, unpredictable, detached, not very emotional. So what you really need and want in a relationship is the sense of space freedom, being social with your partner, being social with other people, being ready for new experiences all the time, having smart people around you, <laughs> you know, be ready for having a lot of smart people around you if, you know, you're together with um, someone with displacement or if you have displacement. But really be understanding and really, you know, talk about problems without putting too much emotions into it. You know, you do have to, you know, cry with a <laughs> laughing smile. <laughs> I don't know why that came to me. That was the weirdest combination ever. But you guys know what I mean. So that is everything for Juno in Aquarius. Let me know in a comment below if this resonated for you. Also remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!